Hey everybody, Golf41. Been a long time since I've done a YouTube video, so I thought I'd catch y'all up a little bit with what's been happening around the garage. A lot of big projects going on. Uh, we have this Ferris DDSK23 with a 23 horsepower Kawasaki on it. Uh, I'm not even sure about the deck size. I want to say about 48 inches or so. But this puppy, we ran into some problems last summer the oil was overfilled and ended up pushing the upper and lower crank seals out of the crankcase. So that was a big project. Um, I had to pull the motor, uh, clean everything up. This thing was pushing about two tenths of a quart of oil out every 15 minutes. So yeah, it made a mess. It made a big mess. I was about two to three hours just cleaning alone before I could actually get the motor out and then do the do the repair. But when I pulled the flywheel off <clears throat> and the magneto, the upper crank seal was actually sitting like this outside of the casing. So yeah, it was pushing some oil. But got it done, got it cleaned up, put back together, adjusted, greased, uh, blade sharpened, ready to go. It's actually, um, it looks rough, right? And it is rough. But this mower did see commercial service, I'm assuming, with a landscaping company. But for our two and a quarter acres under grass here, that does exactly what we need. We went from two and a half hours with a lawn tractor mowing lawn to about 45 minutes with this thing. So it's a big time saver and has really been good for us. Uh, one of the things that had to occur with the oil seal repairs, there's a muffler that sits right here on this bracket, uh, comes up from the pipe, makes a 90, and sits up about this high. I actually had to grind that off to be able to pull the motor. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, once I got the muffler off, started shaking it a little bit, and here all the internal baffles let go. So it sounded like shaking a can of nuts and bolts. So, Went to source a replacement, uh, direct factory replacements run anywhere from 160 to $250, so we're not doing that. Interestingly enough, the exhaust tube here, the OD dimension is 28.5 millimeters. Doing a quick search on the internet, a motorcycle muffler will actually fit. So I'm going to have to engineer, hillbilly engineer something up on that but we'll get to that project later. Uh, it's not a not a terrible big deal need. But yeah, that's our Ferris, man. She runs good. She runs good now. Latest project, I'm working on my grandfather's rototiller. Uh, I purchased for him before he he went into assisted living. Uh, Grenda bought this Troy built horse, brand new, near as I can tell in 19, I think about 1971, 1972, which would have been Oh, five years or so before he retired. He uh, was going to save money, so had a big half-acre garden and bought this thing brand new. Um, Granddad always optioned up his equipment, so it came with the bumper guard around the engine. sits around here. You don't see too many of those. Uh, not only general purpose tines, which is standard to the tiller, but also a set of bolo or pick tines. They actually just look like metal rod with a loop in them. And a potato fur, which is a, a rare option. Not too many of those around. <coughs> so this tiller, tiller sat out in the shed uh, 10 years. We've been at this property. And I pulled it out last winter, winter of 20, to uh, get it going. I had just joined a hunting club and the the right hand man of the club wanted to put in some deer plots so he plowed stuff up with his ATV and I said hey I'll bring my tiller up so got it going last summer it was running but come to find out the flywheel crank seal oil seal was leaking and spraying oil all over the magneto it's not good doesn't help doesn't help ignition so decided to pull it out um, replace the oil seal, retime the magneto, uh, getting spark, was not firing, pulled the carburetor, here the needle seat 
had gone like this internal to the carburetor got that out replaced it and still nothing uh, one of the things I discovered with this tiller which by the way has the Tecumseh six horse engine the model number is an HH60 is that uh, valves were leaking a lot of carbon build up on the valves and also discovered a puddle of oil on top of the cylinder so pulled apart the motor this afternoon and check the ring gap and the ring gap is way out of spec it actually measured about uh it actually measured about six tenths of an inch of ring gap believe it or not yeah yeah that bad so jumped on the internet real quick uh rings and pistons for these things either are standard or board over uh ten thousandths or twenty thousandths are difficult to find and if you do find them you're gonna pay for them but we'll get them. So I'm thinking a new set of rings, probably a new piston too. The piston has a little bit of wear. I don't know if you guys can see it right up top, on top of the deck there. It's actually kind of concaved in a little bit, sloped in that way towards the center. So uh, yeah, we're gonna, gonna be looking at a piston too, I think, and a little bit of scoring here and there. Cylinder doesn't look that bad though, thank goodness. So we'll give it a quick home, put some rings in it, probably a new piston and see what we get. I think we'll be pretty good. Um, also planning to grind the valves. Unfortunately, I do not have a, gr a valve grinder. Uh, those things are running five to 800 bucks on the internet used. So that would eat up a big chunk of the play money and like to have a little bit of reserve if you know what I mean but the uh, the guys where we get our cars done they're into racing go-karts and that sort of thing so I'm thinking they probably have a valve grinder so we'll face the valves uh, just clean them up really they're not terrible um, seat them lap them rings piston put it all back together and we should be good uh, new oil seal is in I don't know if you guys can see that there. So that appears to be holding oil, even after cranking the engine, trying to get it to fire. But uh, yeah, these Tecumsehs, their parts are starting to dry up for them, you know? Uh, 15 years ago, you could get parts, just about anything you wanted, no problem. But these days, parts are drying up. Um, you know, like I said, Grenda did a lot of options, right? So he ordered this with the electric start and also the charging mechanism. Um, there are barrel diodes that actually go in, in these slots from the factory to charge the battery. Can't get those anymore. I got a couple lying around from Grandad that are like pushing 50 years old, but you can't get them. So there's a couple little hints out on the internet when it ended up doing was buying commercial grade or modern diodes and soldering them in and it works the battery's charging so kind of kind of proud of myself for that repair but yeah so you know we'll see um gonna put a lot of time on this thing with this garden um i've used it here and there ever since i've had it been about 15 years but it seems like every time i go to use it it, it doesn't want to fire so uh you know some of that's carb some's ignition but of tired of getting mess, messing around and we'll get it right and besides gonna have to get deer plots done for for next deer season but anyway want to catch you guys up not too much else going on project wise i uh, got a me tag 92 i'm working on a long base model right here uh, this one was not firing so come to find out the wrist pin had worn on the connecting rod. So it was actually going like this on each rotation. And I think throwing off the timing. So pulled it apart, uh, looked at the piston rings. They were completely frozen with carbon buildup in the ring groove. And of course, 
busted a ring, taking it off. So just ordered parts from Bob out in Marion, Iowa. Uh, super good dude. It's my number one go-to for Maytag parts. But yeah, we'll get the Maytag going. And that will probably be up for sale at some point this summer. Uh, don't know what year it is. Uh, you know, it's, I mean, all these Maytags anymore pushing 80, 90, 100, 110 years old now. So keep an eye out on the channel and uh, be on the lookout for Maytag 92. Once I get the uh, once I get the parts in for the Tecumseh, the rings and the piston, I'll have a video of the install and that honing, all that good stuff. And hopefully we'll have a video of that thing running and doing some tilling out here in the in the old paddock. But anyway, nice to be back on YouTube a little bit and trust everyone's doing well. Thanks again. Be sure and hit subscribe.